Hello everybody, finally! Welcome back to another Luna Lua tutorial. This time, it's APIs. APIs are pretty simple, so this is probably going to be a shorter video. So basically, APIs are just like lots of code that are relegated to a file that isn't lunadll.lua, if that makes any sense at all. So basically how you would load an API into your level is just like local API title, API load. Um, and typically you want to have your variable name be the same as the actual API title. So let's take a really, really simple API here, uh, rng.lua, which is basically just random number generator. It's better than the built-in, it's way better actually in the built-in math random in Lua itself. So if you wanted to load that, you basically just do local RNG equals API load RNG. And since RNG is an included API, you won't have any problems importing it. But if you don't have the API, then it'll give a Lua error. So you'll e either have to download it and put it in your Lua script slib folder or your level folder. It'll access it either way. Um, <clears throat> so basically how you would do, how you, you would use the API, it's just write quick code. Let's do something like spawn a bomb explosion. This is probably going to kill me. Um, and only have like a fifth chance for that to occur every frame. So the main function of RNG is random int First argument is the min is uh basically the two arguments are just the endpoints of the range that it's going to generate a random number in and one and five are included so it's either gonna have one two three four or five so we'll just check that and then uh, whatever. Excuse me if I got the arguments wrong. And make sure when you're using functions, you always put your variable name and a dot right before the function name, otherwise it won't work. So let's just test this out really quick. And, and I did that wrong. Good job, me. I am pretty good at... Well, it is doing it randomly, so let's pick a better number. Let's just do 400. So see, it's not blowing me up right now. Soon enough, it should blow me up. Eventually. Eventually. Never mind. Um, and you can also just do this with stuff like, let's just like tone it down to 100 instead. And maybe spawn it around the player. So you would just add these. And I'll make it so it can be either 128 pixels to the left or to the right. Same for the Y value. So it won't spawn right on top of me. You see the- they're randomly spawning around me, only a hundred chance per frame, so yep, that sure is Lua. Um, and now how to actually create APIs. This is a bit more complicated, so I'll just name this one example API local. First thing you have to do is this. <laughs> Good. This basically just makes example API an empty table so you can use it all over the place with like the dots and all that blah 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 probably not explaining this very well but it doesn't really matter you just have to have that the other important line is return example api and that will just like make the api actually run so let's just save this in my lua scripts folder whoops uh lua 
All right, so, so you can just do whatever here, but usually you're gonna want to access stuff like on loop or on tick actually, or on start in here, but you can't just do that normally. Instead, you have to do function example API on init API. I believe that's right. Let me just double check. I am very professional. Um, yes. So basically on an API just calls itself as soon as it's the API is loaded with API.load. So if you wanted to use on tick in this, and on tick is basically on loop, but it runs at a better time. It's a bunch of technical stuff. Just use on tick for everything instead of on loop. Um, so you do register event. This has four arguments. The first one, you just have to type in your API name. Second one, you have to actually type in the event name. It's in quotations. Yep. All right. Um, this, and the next two are optional, and I'm just going to show these off anyways. The third argument is basically you can give a custom name to your functions. So on butts, sure. So basically, if we may, if we filled stuff in with example API on butts. It's basically just on loop, but with a different name, or on tick, sorry. And I use basically a lot. I'm very good at speaking. And the uh, final argument is before main call, where if that's set to false, then the registered event will run after it is run, ran in the regular little DLL.lua, but it defaults to true and you probably won't be needing it to run after the main call anyways very often, so I'm just gonna leave that one blank. So let's just do the simple thing. Let's do the my counter thing. Um, my counter equals my counter plus one. Text.print, oops. Probably got the arguments wrong because I don't know. Oh, that wasn't right. <laughs> I didn't actually load the API. Oh, so that did work. All right. So now we just got a counter counting up in the corner like the first video. Oh man, it's like callback or something. But you can also do something like, you can instead put the API name in front of that, example API.myCounter equals zero. And then meanwhile in this file, you can do something like, you can set it in here too. So I'll just make it start off at 700. Okay, I'm such an idiot. Um, I forgot to put example API my counter in front of everything because I'm a dumb. So yeah, there you go. Now it's increasing from 700. So that's how to make like custom variables for your API. So that's base. That's the basics of doing APIs. Obviously, there's a lot more advanced things you can do, but that's all a lot of different stuff that I will be covering in later videos, like drawing and more advanced enemy stuff and all that. So hopefully you found this helpful um, and hopefully I won't take a two million year long break between this and the next video. Next video will be the long awaited and by long awaited I mean I don't people yelled at me to do it. Um, the video on the data class. So hooray!